Let's take a look at the box and see what's inside the box. This is the Tacom Blitz Panzer 3M. And for a lower price kit, we'll see what we end up with. I want to apologize for my hands throughout this video. My, my hands are going to be a mess. I'm restoring my 1974 Pontiac Trans Am and I, my hands get really dirty. So that's the story with that. I removed the plastic from the sprues to get a better look at the parts. There are a lot of similarities with the quality of the parts in this kit compared to the Tacom Blitz Yag Tiger that I built earlier. Many of the parts have heavy seams and a lot of the small parts have flash. So you're going to have some cleanup to do before assembling the kit. I didn't see a parts count number on the box, but the parts count looks to be in that sweet spot where you get some nice detail without it taking a lifetime to build the model. Lincoln Link tracks, you know, they're okay. Certainly better than rubber band tracks. Um, but yeah, I've become partial to individual Link tracks. I just like how they give you the freedom to sag the tracks how you like. And if your model has the capability of adjustable suspension, then individual Link tracks is the only way to go to pose your model. Whereas with Lincoln Link tracks, you're pretty much stuck with just having it whatever your lengths are like. I did not use these 3D printed tool clamps. I ended up building the model straight from the box with the exception of having some wire grabs and uh, some wire for some conduit. Otherwise it's just built straight from the box.
I like when the manufacturer gives us color five views. It gives us something as a go by if if you decide to try to duplicate one of these schemes. And after the model's built, I'll cut these pages out and save them. Steps one and two complete. Everything went pretty well. Had a little bit of trouble with the arms. The notches for the arms aren't real defined and so they don't fit into the notches real well. And I found that especially the end two are a little problematic. But these pieces here, these shock absorbers, help set the two end pieces. So what I would recommend doing is installing the two ends, the two shocks, and then install the rest of the control arms and then make sure it's all flat. Otherwise, you know, they might be a little wonky. And with the uh, link and link tracks, don't really have the freedom to articulate the tracks. So you're almost, unless you use an aftermarket set of tracks, you have to set them up like this. Some small details here and here. Um, overall, it's okay. Like I said, the fit for the arms, the swing arms, into the notches was a little iffy and I would do the ends first end shock and shock and then do these and make sure they're all they all line up so the first two steps are done and next get on to making wheels building the road wheels you know I had some trouble here and here and you see the pin sticking out here and then they made up with the other side of the wheel but I had difficulty I couldn't get the two halves to fully join and I suppose you could continue to sand on these pins until they would but instead I just took the pins off So the pins look like this, and I just clipped the pins off. When I built the Tacum Blitz, when I built the Tacum Blitz Yag Tiger, I noticed that a lot of the parts had real heavy seams. And this Panzer III, it's the same thing. Now you notice on the wheels here how heavy the seams are. And a lot of the parts are like that. And you see here too with the return rollers, the seams are real heavy in these parts. So it's going to take a lot of sanding to clean these things up. Sanded the road wheels with 100 grit, which might seem pretty aggressive, but as I showed you before, the seams are, are pretty bad. And the wheels don't look too bad sanded with 100 grit, so I'm not going to go any further with that. And you can look down the, down the line, see what the alignment's like. And everything's flat. So the return rollers, they are also sanded with 100 grit. And they fall off. Now the road wheels, 
have a good friction fit. So I'll just leave those on the lower chassis. But the return rollers, they don't fit that well, so I'll just have to put them in the box and save them for later. So step three is done. I also moved and did step four and put the bar here for the front spare track. So that's done. I'm not going to put the track. I'll wait to put the track piece on until much later in the build after we get painting. So we got the road wheels done, the return rollers are done, the front drive is on, and we're going to move on to step five. Step six, I assembled the muffler. I'm going to leave this off the model so I can paint it, and then I'll attach it to the model at, you know, towards the end of the construction. I need to sand the seams out here. And I might possibly put a dent or something in it, but I don't know that for sure. Now this piece here, I assembled with the doors open, you know, simply because I thought it would give it a little bit more character. These two pieces here, A38, I was unclear on where exactly they wanted me to put those. And so I put them right here. I slid them over the top of the bar. And then, or you can see them here. And then I adjusted the doors. I put a couple drops of cement on the hinges and then move the doors until these, these two uh, rods here connected to the clevis. And that's how my doors are positioned. I don't know if that's correct, but that's how I've done it. And here with the muffler bracket, that's glued in place. And you can see here for the muffler bracket, there's two little indentions here that fit into the muffler bracket. Just like that. And then the pipes glue here. So hopefully that'll all match up later on in the assembly once everything's painted. So that takes us to this step. So we're done with steps five and six. All right, in step seven, we put the drive sprockets together and the return roller, or the idler, and just like with the road wheels, I first sanded this with 100 grit and then I polished it with 320. And the same with the issue with most of the parts is there's pretty heavy parting seams on these parts. And they need to be cleaned up a bit. But, you know, the parts look pretty good. And, uh, you know, the drive sprockets are pretty loose, so they'll fall off. Same with the return rollers, they'll fall off easily. All right, so now it's on to the tracks. All right, I have this piece, this piece, and this piece are glued. There's 11 individual links here and then one individual link here. And I do that per the instructions. And I've used Tamiya Extra Thin. 
and I'm going to let sit for 15 minutes. And at that time, the glue will have bonded the links together to the point where I can move them without it separating. And then what I'll do is I'll put the tracks down underneath the Panzer III chassis and then I'll wrap them up around the front drive sprocket. All right, so this might be a little bit tricky. The uh, idler and the drive sprocket are pretty loose, so hopefully I don't knock them off. Yeah, I need to get this where I can, I can get my fingers under it. I'm going to be careful that I don't break it apart. All right. So that looks pretty good. And if you notice, the top track piece goes right to the center of the idler and the lower track piece is in the center of the rear road wheel so our links are right and so that looks pretty good and we'll let that sit up for a little bit and then I'll work on the remaining pieces back here and I'm going to leave this link right here unglued so I can get it off the model and one thing with the idler and the drive sprocket being so loose and the sag is already in the top piece so I don't have the return rollers on the model this is a rigid piece and it straddles the center of the idler to the center of the drive sprocket so I don't need those return rollers to set this up so that's going to make it easy to get the tracks off the model because I'm going to want the tracks separate for painting so the bottom piece the center of the road wheel and the top piece will go to the center of the idler and center of the drive sprocket and then you know you've got your lengths right. So I'll give this a few minutes to set up and then I'll start working on the back half, or the back portion, it's not a half, and then we'll have the tracks done for this side. And I wanted to pay attention to the direction of the links. So, and I'm not an expert on this, but I think I have them pointing the right way. All right, for the rear portion of the track, I have it laid out per the instructions. There's one piece, one individual length, then the short length, and then nine more individual lengths. And when you lay this out, make sure you got them pointed in the right direction. So when you glue your lengths together, you when you wrap it around your idler or your idler wheel and connect it to underneath your road wheel that you got the tracks pointing in the right direction. All right, this one's a little more tricky. I got a little a little pre-bend going here.
All right, I don't want to mess with that too much. I'll let that sit up. So here we have one side of tracks done, and they turned out turned out all right. And wasn't too much work. Oh, well, now I have the right side done, and it's not too big a chore. You know, I think the biggest secret is is just allowing the cement to set up for a few minutes and the links to bind together so that when you flex them they don't come apart. Well I'll let the tracks dry for probably let it dry overnight that way when I remove the tracks I have a pretty good uh, feeling that they'll stay the way they are. Well, I finished steps 9 and 10. I varied a little bit from the directions in that I flipped the left front front fender guard, the front guard up to just to give it a little bit of character. I added some conduit for the headlights. Other than that, it's built from the box. Got some PE here in the back. And I added the, the tools, added one of the tow cables per the instructions. So, that went pretty well. Got a pretty good seam here, pretty closed up pretty well when I added this piece in. I have a little bit of a seam here. And I don't know whether that'll be covered or not. These fender braces were a little bit tricky to put in. I had to sand this area back here quite a bit. I found that test fitting them here first before trying to install them saved me a lot of grief. So I would recommend that. Other than that, So I'll pick up here in step 11 and continue on. All right, step 11 is completed. Step 11 is completed. Now I left the antenna off and that's in the box. We have the antenna, we have this plate have the hooks, the end hooks, have the PE on this side. We have the spare road wheels which are removable for painting. And then we have the fire extinguisher, a box, two S hooks, and the tow cable. So 
So we'll go on to step 12 and continue on with the build. All right, well, I decided to go ahead and do all five of these steps because I was working in between a bunch of the steps and I just decided to work all the way through them before showing you what, what I have done here. It's really busy. When you get in here, where all these tools are in here, that's going to be really difficult to paint. And, you know, they got the shovel and the axe underneath this antenna rack. And, you know, the S-hooks. And I, I didn't put the jacking block in place because, you know, that they would cover up the S-hooks. There would just be little pieces of them sticking out. And so that part I will put on later. The spare road wheels, I left those off. I mean, if you glued all that stuff on, this would just be a nightmare to paint. And even as it is with the jack here trying to get in behind here to paint, it's really going to be a challenge. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I don't know. I'll give it my best shot. As I showed earlier, I have this front fender flip back. And I did a little bit of damage here to this rear fender. Other than that, there's not going to be any damage. I may skew the shirts in just a little bit, but it's all going to be intact, I think. Unless I, maybe I'll leave one piece out. I don't know. So far, the build has been pretty good. I had some fit issue here with this machine gun uh, ball. It did not fit. I had a big gap here between this plate and this little armored ring here, this little armored piece for the ball mount. And so I had to chisel away at the, at the ball on the inside, sand it until I got that gap closed up between these two pieces. And it's, but so far, that's really the only part that hasn't fit. I have had some issues with the little tabs on some of these small parts and the receiver holes. But I found that, you know, I put a little bit of um, thin cement on the tabs and they melt enough or they just go down into the holes when I push the part in place. It's busy. It's a busy, it's a busy hole. So... It's going to be a challenge to paint it, but, you know, we'll just move forward. The black primer that I'm going to use is going to be a help where I get the primer down into these areas and where I can't get in there with the brush to paint these tools, hopefully that black primer will help. So, so these steps are done. And now we'll move on to the shirts in here, which that shouldn't take too long. All right, I finished steps 16 and 17. And you can see that the shirts in fits on nicely. And it slides into these top tabs and then locks in here. So it holds in pretty nice. It's a little bit irregular, but makes it look a bit authentic. There's a additional armor front. Gives the front, certainly gives the front a little bit of character. I did have some difficulty gluing the top of the chassis of the you know hull to the bottom of the hull and you know there's some gaps here where I have to really force the pieces together but uh, eventually I got it to fit pretty well cool. 
but the the photo at Sherson's a nice touch and it looks nice. I think when we get a turret on it and get the tracks on it, it's going to look pretty sharp. Well, I completed steps 18 through 21, and it builds into a really nice looking turret. I did add some wire grabs here and here, and I left the doors open, side doors open, and the cupola hatch open, because I'm going to see if I can paint these figures well enough to put them in the model. I'm not a great figure painter, but I'm going to give it a shot. During uh, assembly, I had some issues with the storage bin. The fit wasn't great with that, especially putting this front part to the main part of the storage bin. I had some problems with that, and I really had to work it. So I used cement press the pieces together until the cement softened and you know effectively welded itself together and filled in the small gaps and other than that you know really that was the only problem I had but it really it's a really a nice looking turret and you know we have a little bit of detail here and you know, we have some molded in detail here. It would have been nice to have some photo etch or something here, but I suppose not everyone's going to have the doors open, so I understand that. But, you know, we got some nice detail here with the smoke grenades and the, the hooks, the small hooks here. That looks pretty nice. And I apologize for my hands. I've been working on my... 74 Trans Am, restoring it, and you know, I get really dirty. So, uh, my fingers are, my hands are a little pretty dirty, and my fingernails could be better. But it's nice, it looks really nice. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside of the turret black to kind of hide the fact that there's nothing in there. So, when I have my figures in the turret, trying to hide my fingernails. So when I have my figures in the turret, you can't see anything inside. But yeah, nice. I'm I'm pretty I'm pleased with that. I think it turned out really nice. And I'm eager to get the turret finished and get the spaced armor on it and of course the gun. I think it's going to look pretty nice. So, on to the next step. All right, I finished up steps 22 and 23, and it really builds into a, a really nice looking turret. Now there's a little bit of a fit problem here, 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 and I've tried to use some thin cement to try to melt the pieces together but it's just not quite meeting up, so I'm going to have to use just a tiny bit of putty. But look at that beautiful spaced armor on that gun, on that gun mantlet. That is nice. That is pretty cool. And they just really did a, a nice job with that. And other than, you know, some of the little imperfections here where the parts didn't meet up quite right you know in here that'll require a little bit of putty just a tiny bit other than that it builds into just a really nice looking turret and I did not put the gun breech on because you're not gonna see it I'm going to paint the inside black 
And so I just didn't even spend the time doing that. It's not necessary for the movement of the gun. And so I just didn't do it. Like I said, I'm going to paint the inside black because I'm going to have figures in there. And there's nothing in there, so that way I can just kind of hide the fact that there's nothing in there. It's got a little tiny gun, main gun, but it's got nice detail. And you know, I kind of had mixed feelings about the Yag Tiger. Um, and there's some few things about this model that aren't perfect. But I have to say, I kind of like this model better than building the uh, Tacom Blitz Yag Tiger. So next, I'll start with the spaced armor. And I'm going to have these sides down because I got the doors open. And then once that's done, really, I just put the put the turret on and then start thinking about paint. All right, well, I think I'm done. I got the spaced armor on the turret. And uh, I put the door down because I'm going to have figures in there. But I have to say, it, it it's pretty neat. And with all the... The door detail here, we got the spaced armor folded down. We have the uh, smoke grenades here. And uh, it's pretty impressive. We have the spaced armor for the mantlet, which looks pretty nice. So the turret built up into a pretty nice model. Well, the construction's done, and it's time to start thinking about paint. This model's real busy. It's got a lot of parts on it, and I think it's going to be a real challenge to paint. So I don't know where I'm going to go with it. I might just do a single Dunkelgelb, maybe a modulated Dunkelgelb paint scheme, or I might try the camo. I don't know. You know, I feel a little intimidated about it right now because... There's so many areas to get into that I think it's just going to be a real challenge to paint.